you here today and all those that are coming. I told the group last night, they are always on time. I mean, it was packed. They were on time, which is amazing. Sunday group kind of comes in, you know, a little bit later, but hopefully you're joining us online as we gather to, today to the Lord's Day, get into God's Word and worship together. And uh, we are talking about raising disciples of Jesus today. We want to raise disciples of Jesus. And uh, we'll go over this verse again, but Matthew chapter 28, verse 19. Go, therefore, he tells us, and make disciples. Go, therefore, and make disciples. And that's a, for all of us that we would be making disciples, making an impact upon this world for Jesus. And uh, so let's open in prayer. Lord Jesus, thank you that you are here where two or more are gathered in your name. You're right here with us, Lord. So come upon us in a mighty and powerful way. May your spirit just infuse us today with power and might and strength and courage. And, Lord, that uh, the gospel would go forth. You said in your word, I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God unto salvation. We don't want to be ashamed of your word today. And, uh, Lord, so we lift up this whole time of worship and praise and getting into your word. And uh, may the living water just come and refresh our spirits today. In Jesus' name. And everyone said? Amen. 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 If you want to stand, you can stand. If you want to sit, you can sit as we gather together to worship the Lord today. Glad you're joining us. Are you hurting and broken within? Overwhelmed by the weight of your sin? Jesus is calling. Have you come to the end of yourself? Will you thirst for a drink from the well? Jesus is calling. Oh, come to the altar, the Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Leave behind your regrets and mistakes. Come today, there's no reason to wait. Jesus is calling. Bring your sorrows and trade them for joy. From the ashes, a new life is born. Jesus is calling. Oh, come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Isn't he wonderful? Sing hallelujah, Christ is risen. Bow down before him, for he is Lord of all. Sing hallelujah, Christ is risen. Christ is risen, bow 
down before him for he is lord of all sing hallelujah christ is risen oh come to the altar the father's arms are open wide forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of jesus christ oh come to the altar the father's arms are open wide forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of jesus christ bear your cross as you wait for the crown tell the world of the treasure you found out of sadness from wherever you've been come broken hearted let rescue begin come find your mercy sinner come kneel earth has no sorrow that heaven can't heal earth has no sorrow that heaven can't heal lay down your burden Lay down your shame All who are broken Lift up your face Oh, wanderer, come home You're not too far So lay down your hurt Lay down your heart Come as you are There's hope for the hopeless and all those who've strayed. Come sit at the table, come taste the grace. There's rest for the weary, rest that endures. Earth has no sorrow that heaven can't cure. Lay down your burdens, lay down your shame. All who are broken, lift up your face. Oh, wanderer, come home. You're not too far. So lay down your hurt, lay down your heart. Come as you are. Come as you are. Come as you are, fall in his arms. Come as you are, there's joy for the morning, sinner be still. Earth has no sorrow that heaven can't heal. Earth has no sorrow that heaven can't heal. Lay down your burdens, lay down your shame. All who are broken, lift up your face. Wanderer, come home. You're not too far So lay down your hurt Lay down your heart Come as you are Come as you are
just think that's a, a really beautiful song and it reminds us about you know no matter how many times we backslide or we have our our issues and our challenges in life that God doesn't give up on us and and it's it's just a, a really beautiful thing that you know he never lets go of us for me Love's like a hurricane I am a tree bending beneath the weight of his wind and mercy When all of a sudden I am unaware of these afflictions eclipsed by glory and I realize just how beautiful you are and how great your affections are for me. No, oh, how he loves us all. Oh. oh, how he loves us. How he loves us all. me. Love's like a hurricane. I am a tree bending beneath the weight of his wind and mercy. And all of a sudden, I am unaware of these afflictions eclipsed by glory. And I realize just how beautiful you are and how great your affections are for me. No, oh, how he loves us all. Oh, how he loves us. How he loves us all. Yeah, he loves us. Oh, how he loves us. Oh, how he loves us. Oh, how he loves. Yeah, he loves us. Oh, how he loves us. Oh, how he loves us. Oh, how he loves. Oh, We are his portion and he is our prize drawn to redemption by the grace in his eyes if his grace is an ocean we're all sinking and heaven meets earth like a passionate kiss and my heart turns violently side of my chest i don't have time to maintain these regrets when i think about the way he loves us oh how he loves us oh how he loves us oh how he loves yeah he loves us oh how he loves us oh how Praise God. Amen. Amen. Good to be in the house of the Lord today. Amen. Has God been wonderful to you? Amen? Amen. Yes. Lord, we just thank you right now, Father, for all that you've done in our lives, Lord. 
Lord, we were walking in darkness. We were totally blinded, totally deceived. The enemy had us bound and headed for hell. But you and your wisdom and you and your grace, you handpicked us. You reached down from heaven. You chose us. We didn't chose you. You reached down from heaven, put your seal upon us, called us from darkness into your marvelous light, Lord. And you brought us here right now. We are here right now as the body of Christ. And we just say, come, Lord God, come, that you would meet us in this place, that you would just continue to receive worship from us, Lord, and that you would speak to us from the word of God, that you would minister truth, Lord, light and direction, Lord God, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Say hi to the neighbor if you like. Wave. You know, I don't know if you know it yet, but 2020 is behind us. We're in 2021. Hallelujah. Right now, we, are, we need to be making moves and establishing where we're headed in 2021 as opposed to where we're... 2020 is behind us. Let's lay a foundation of faith going forward. You know what? I, I believe, and I keep saying it, that God has a way through what lay ahead. And we don't know, but he is more powerful than whatever the enemy can throw at us, whatever deceptions, whatever the government might throw at us. God in his word is the way through. Amen? Well, this time we're going to take the tithes and offering. Anybody bring a tithes and offering to God today? Anybody got a sacrifice of praise they want to give to God? Amen? Let's, let's put into God's coffers. How many people know that this church needs money to run? Amen. How many people did God put money in your pocket? Anybody got a bank account that God put money in your pocket? Does anybody know what the Bible says about that? How much? 10%. That's the percentage. And it's an equal amount for everybody. Because if you make about, what well, doesn't matter, the dollar amount, it's 10%. And I always say this, thank God he didn't say 50%. He didn't say 75%. How much does the government want from you? If you're self-employed, they're taking 35 to 50%. That's what the government wants, and you don't get much back from the government. If you got money to put into the government... You ain't getting it back in welfare, so you ain't really getting nothing. You get a street sign, maybe a you know pothole covered. But when we put into the yeah, amen. But when we put into the kingdom, everything we put into the kingdom is on the other side waiting for us. Streets of gold, right? Eternal. There's no moth and there's no rust up there eating what we put in to the kingdom. It's eternal, amen. You want to pray, brother? Sure. Why not? Go ahead. Amen. For your glory. God, you're awesome. You are. Amen. Amen. Finds me twenty fourth place, twenty four dropouts at the end of the day. Life is not what I thought it was twenty four hours ago. Still, I'm singing, Spirit, take me up in arms with you. And I'm not who I thought I was 24 hours ago Till I'm singing, Spirit, take me up in arms with you It's 24 reasons to admit that I'm wrong With all my excuses 
still 24 strong. I'm not copping out, not copping out, not copping out. When you're raising the dead in me, oh, oh, I am the second man, oh, oh, I am the second man now. I am the second man now. And you're raising these 24 voices With 24 hearts With all of my symphonies With 24 parts But I want to be one today Centered and true And I'm singing spirit Take me up arms with you and you're raising the dead in me oh oh i am the second man oh oh i am the second man now i am the second man now and you're raising the dead in me oh oh i am the second man oh oh i am the second man now I am the second man now And you're raising the dead in me I want to see miracles To see the world change wrestled the angel for more than a name for more than a feeling for more than a cause I'm singing spirit take me up in arms with you resurrection and the what life. life and everyone that believes in me even though he dies yet he shall live, live. praise God um, Sharon that's Sharon she's gonna take the uh, what age group eight and Jolie over here two great Sunday school teachers what grade are two years to five years or something like that all right Praise God. And Adam right there, the youth group. That's Adam. And uh, his 15 children. And his wonderful wife. <laughs> All right. Take out your Bibles. Take out your sermon notes, if you will. Get into God's Word, because God's Word cleanses us and refreshes us and renews us. In Matthew chapter 28, verse 19, right before Jesus left this earth, he says, Go therefore and make disciples. Change the world. Impact the world for Jesus. Go and make disciples. That's what he wants us to do. And I hope that, you know, every one of us, that we're impacting somebody for Jesus. That we have an influence upon people for Jesus. You know, um, 
when Donna and I, when our first child came along, David, um, friends asked us, do you have a plan? No. <laughs> do you know what you're doing? No. <laughs> but we figured it out, right, really quickly. Um, now with David um, and Dana and Jeff and uh, David Jeffrey, you know, now he's six weeks old, but the same thing. Do they have a plan, the first child? Not really. You know, do they know what they're doing? They're learning. <laughs> you know, I, I mean, I was talking to my mom last night, and she was here, and, you know, I was the experiment. I was the oldest one. I was the experiment. And then by the time, you know, my younger brother came along, I mean, here. You know, they had it all down, and uh, not all down, but they had it pretty much. And I was thinking about raising children and raising spiritual children, you know, that God wants us to have an impl impact. He wants us to have influence for him, influence for God upon those children. And uh, I want you to turn to Psalms 127. How do we grow people spiritually? You know, we should be growing people spiritually. How do we do it? And the Apostle Paul gives us a great example. But in Psalms 127, verse 1, it says, Unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain who build it. The futility of, you know, man, you labor in vain unless you got God with you. You know, unless God's the first in your life. And uh, even in our government, you know, if, if we don't have God as part of our government, we don't get back to his word, we're laboring in vain. It's all vanity. And then he says, unless the Lord guards the city, the watchmen keep awake in vain. And you can see all the Bible, you know, stories that talk about how God, you know, was protecting Israel. And so many times when they were outnumbered, you know, they, were, they, they didn't have, you know, the, the resources or whatever they needed to, the, the armies that were coming against them. But God was fighting for them, and God took care of them. Remember Gideon? Gideon, how many soldiers did Gideon have? 300. And how many did the other people have that were coming against them? I think it was 30, 40, 60,000. It was like outnumbered. But God, if God be for you, what did the scripture say? Who can be against you if God be for you? And then it goes on and it says, it is vain for you to rise up early. I agree. <laughs> to retire late, to eat bread of painful labors, for he gives to his beloved even in his sleep. And the idea there is without God, you know, again, it's futility Amen. without God. Right. And then in verse 3, this is a verse that the United States and the rest of the world really needs to understand today. Behold, children are a what? A heritage or a gift. They're a gift of the Lord. Not something that you throw away. Not something that you kill in the womb. They are a gift from the Lord. Do you know what was slid into this new bill that was just passed? Funding Planned Parenthood again. I don't want my tax daughters, do, dollars. I don't want them to fund Planned Parenthood, which is the biggest killer of abortions, you know, in the world today. I, I don't want that. You know, and there was one guy that stood up, one U.S. Con or a senator that stood up against that bill. And I, I, you'll have to check, fact check it out for yourselves. But I heard that they took it out of the bill, and I hope they did. You know, that they had an amendment that, I don't know. Check it out. But that's crazy. What does that have to do with the stimulus bill? What does that have to do with you know, uh, the virus and everything else that we have going on today. I, it drives me crazy. You know, when we're, we're aborting over a million babies a year? And so they're a gift. God says they're a gift of the Lord. 
Are they easy to take care of? Are they easy to raise? Some are. Some are. <laughs> like Brenner. But the fruit of the womb is a reward, it says. It's a reward like arrows in the hand of a warrior. So are the children of one's youth. And they really cause us to get on our knees and pray. Get on our knees and pray. It's tough to be a good parent more than ever. You know why? Because one of the things that Satan is attacking today is the family. He's attacking marriages. You know, he's a deceiver, a liar. You don't want to miss next weekend's sermon. I mean, he's a liar. He's a thief. He comes to kill and destroy. And look how many divorces there are. You know, even in the church, there's over 50%. Satan wants to destroy the family. And look what's being pushed upon our kids. You know, I mean, there's, I think there's 22 states now that are sticking up when they pass legislation. And I don't know if it'll usurp what the government has passed, the federal government. But they said, hey, we are not going to allow guys to dress in the women's bathrooms or in the women's locker rooms or to compete, men competing with women. We're not going to allow that. So they pass legislation, most of them in uh, the 22 states, and maybe more coming up. You know, we're not living in a, a friendly, family-friendly society today. So think about this. What happened to pro-life? What happened to pro-family? What happened to pro-religious liberty policies? What happened to the conservative biblical view that should be running our government like it says on our money, in God we trust? And one of the things that they say they're going to get rid of very soon here is all the money. It's all going to go paperless. It's all going to go with some other kind of currency. Are we being prepared for that today? I mean, think about it. Most things are done by credit cards today right or on your phone you i last night um or yesterday i uh, there's some kind of app now i didn't even know about it what's what are the different apps that you can pay for things PayPal. not paypal Venmo. what is that Venmo. Vimbo? Venmo. them bones gonna rise again Vembo. <laughs> i didn't even know about it what Venmo. Is, is there another one similar to that one? One called <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean, it's like we're getting rid of all the, all the money. You know, it, I mean, are we getting closer to the time where, you know, the, everything's going to be done by a chip? You're going to have to carry around something that says you've had the vaccine or you won't be able to drive or they're going to have, you know, checkpoints to see if you have your vaccine. And, you know, you can't get on airplanes. You can't fly anywhere. You know, and pretty soon you can't drive anywhere. All this is kind of, we live and breathe in a culture that is getting more and more hostile to Christianity. Against biblical beliefs, against what God says in his word. So how, how in this world do we raise up 21st century Christians? Matthew 20, how do we make disciples in this world today? We're living in a pagan culture. Well, the apostle Paul lived in a pagan culture similar to ours. They were serving all kinds of different gods, different idols. There was immorality. You know, there was corruption. All these things going on, and Paul, the Apostle Paul, raised up godly disciples through the power of the Holy Spirit. What was this? What? I mean, he gave us the scriptures to encourage us and exhort us. How did he do it? I mean, of course, with God's help, because it is impossible with man, but all things are possible with God, right? You being here today is a miracle. I mean, last night, at 6.30, I 
there was more people than there's been in the last year that were here. Right at 630, they were here, ready to worship. It was great. And I know today there's many people that are watching online, and eventually, hopefully, they'll come back. If they can open up the Padres, they can open up the churches. And the Padres are supposed to be opening up on April 1st. But you can't go. Only 6,000 are going to be allowed to go. <laughs> yeah. And those are the people that have the seats right behind the dugout. The big money guys. So I want you to write these down in your outline. And Paul was an example. First of all, he was an example. An example of godliness. An example of what he wanted the disciples to become. And he says, I want to imitate Christ. I hope every one of us here in this room, we want to imitate Christ. Imitate Christ. That we would have the mind of Christ. So many scripture verses talk about that. But turn to 1 Thessalonians chapter 1. We have the Green family here today, and they've been traveling around everywhere. Where, where do you guys, what's your hometown? Idaho. Idaho. But now they're back in God's country, San Diego, for a while. But First Thessalonians, chapter 1. It says in verse 5, but our gospel did not come to you in word only. A lot of people, you know, are good talkers. But it wasn't in word only. But also in the power of the Holy Spirit. And with full conviction. Just as you know what kind of men we prove to be among you for your sake. You know, not just be hearers of the word, but also be what? doers of the word he imitated christ it says in verse six and then you the disciples that accepted christ the gospel the power of the gospel you have become imitators of us and of the lord having received the word in much tribulation there was still tribulation in the world you'll have tribulation but they say he says with the joy of the holy spirit Turn over to 1 Corinthians chapter 4. 1 Corinthians chapter 4. You know, your life is a testimony to Jesus. Paul's life was a testimony to Jesus. And, you know, I always remember the phrase, I think Billy Graham used it. He says, you may be the only Bible, your life, your example, that people will ever read or ever see. Your life. And that could bring them to Christ. So he says, be imitators of Christ. In 1 Corinthians 4, 16. Is that the one I wanted? Oh, I'm in five. <laughs> For I exhort you, uh, therefore, to be what? Imitators of me. As I am an imitator of Christ, you be an imitator of me. You be an example for Christ. You live for Christ. Isn't that what Philippians 1.21 says? For me to live is what? Christ. For me to live is Christ. And then turn over to 1 Timothy chapter 4. 1 Timothy chapter 4. I like it because in the New Testament all the T's are together. 1 Timothy, 1 Thessalonians, Titus. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 12 says, Let no one look down on your youthfulness, but rather, here it is, in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, in purity, show yourselves to be an example to those who believe. Make disciples. Be an example to them. You know, if they see your life, do they see Christ Shining through you, right? Be an example. Be an imitator of Christ. I was reading a story about a guy, who evangelist, whose name was Jonathan Edwards. You ever hear of him? I mean, I, there was a book I read about Jonathan Edwards' life. It was amazing. 
his life. And he was just a guy like us, but he lived for Christ. He was an imitator of Christ. He was an example to others for Christ, including his family, including his grandkids, including his great-grandkids. And here's just a synopsis of his life and what happened. His descendants, because he was a man of God like the Apostle Paul, that lived for Christ, his descendants, 300 of them became pastors and missionaries. 300. 100 became college professors. 30 became judges. 100 became lawyers. 60 became physicians. 14 of them became university presidents. 3 became U.S. congressmen. And 1 became the vice president of the United States all because he was an imitator of Christ and he lived for Christ. Now that could be every one of us here in this room. You have no idea what type of impact you have down the road if you're living for Christ. If you're an example for Christ, if you're a leader in your home, in your job, in your retirement, you know, whatever it is. And so, but the Apostle Paul, when he started, uh, you know, he's, they give an award for sports players that had a terrible season or they had injuries, and then the next year they were stars. They're, they're called comeback kids. Paul was a comeback kid. I mean, he would have gotten the award back there in those days. He hated Christians. Tell the person next to you, if Paul was here, he hated Paul, he hated you. Well, Saul, his name was changed. He hated you. He was opposed to you. And I want you to turn to Acts chapter 8. But God grabbed a hold of his life. Can God grab a hold of any person's life? Yes. Yes, he can, and he wants to. In Acts chapter 8, verse 3, it says, but Saul began ravaging the church, entering house upon house, and dragging off men and women and put them in prison. Now that's happening in China today. That's happening in Africa today. That's happening in Nigeria today. That's happening in many places in the world. If people stand up for Christ and declare that they are Christians and are going to live by the Bible... They're taken away. Paul, Saul wanted to take them away and get rid of him. In Acts chapter 9, verse 1, Saul was still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord. And he went to the high priest and he asked for letters from him to the synagogues at Damascus. <sighs> so sad. You know, are we coming to a time in America where that's going to happen? You know, people said, oh, no way this is going to happen or that's going to happen. No way could it happen in our country. You know, no way can they take us off the Internet and close us down off or all those media things if we stand up for Christ. It's happening today. No way can those things happen. Paul, it says, he asked for letters to... So that if, verse 2, if he found any belonging to the way, that was the name of the early Christians, both men and women, he might have them bound and brought to Jerusalem. But his life changed, starting in verse 3. And it came about that as he journeyed, he was approaching Damascus, and suddenly there was a light from heaven that flashed around him, and he fell to the ground, and he heard a voice saying, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And you can read the rest of the story there. His life changed. A persecutor of the church to one of the leaders of the church, to one of the great disciples of, the, of Jesus, one of the great apostles. His life was transformed. Now that should happen in our lives as we accept Christ. Our lives should start to be transformed. It should be transformed. You know, I was sitting uh, back here where Chris is. Raise your hand, Chris. Yeah, I was sitting back there where he was. And uh, as the worship was going on, 
and uh, the light above him was flickering <laughs> off and on. You know, the, the bulb was going out, and it was like, I'm, like I'm going, what's happening? You know, it's flick. What, I mean, are we losing electricity? I think we paid the bill. You know, what's, what's going on? And so the next day we, we took the light bulb out. It was all burnt out. And I'm thinking, that's like a lot of Christmas in there. It's, it's just flickering, all burnt out. Man, now's the time for our lights to shine more than ever. For our lights to shine. You know, we replaced some of these bulbs a couple of years ago. And you can see they're really bright, aren't they? They're not. They're, some are brown. Some are not as bright. We want to be like those bright lights. What is it called? It's called uh, daylight. daylight. It's called daylight bulbs. It's the brightest little long thing you can get. I want to be like a daylight bulb. I don't want to be flickering. In this world, we need to be like strong lights of the world shining for Jesus. And that was the Apostle Paul. His life was transformed. And then, you, he, you know, he, really, history was turned around when the Apostle Paul went out to all the different cities making disciples. And in Matthew, Jesus says he wants us to go and make disciples in our own neighborhoods. Our own families, wherever we go. Here's another thing. Go back to 1 Thessalonians chapter 2. Another thing about the Apostle Paul. First Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 1. It says, For you yourselves know, brethren, that our coming to you was not in vain, but after we had already suffered and been mistreated in Philippi, as you know, we had the boldness, boldness in our God, to speak to you the gospel of God amid much opposition. You know, boldness. I mean, today, that's, that, that's us. Do we have boldness in our God to speak the gospel? And we are in a counterculture against Christianity. They don't want you to speak the gospel. They don't want you to, you know, say what God's word is. There's a new law or a new bill that might be passed. I hope it won't. But if it does, you know, even if, if I'm up here speaking against some of the things that are being pushed on our society today, I would be considered a, a hate crime. You would be considered a, a hate crime if you share it. And somebody, you know... Turns you in. But Paul held to the uncompromised truth of God's word. He didn't waver. He didn't compromise. He didn't change it. The uncompromised truth of God's word. He believed God's word and he lived it out. You know, today in schools, they're being taught this whole, you know, anti Christian, not all schools but, and not all teachers, but it's. Some of this curriculum is so ungodly that's being pushed on us. Part of it is there's no right or wrong. Everything is relative. You know, you can live your life the way that you want to live, and if you think that you're a male, you can change your sex. If you think you're a female, you can change your sex. sex. Even as young as three, four years old. That's craziness. Did you know what life was about when you were three or four years old? And many of them that changed their sex are all saying, hey, I should never have done it. I should never have done it. So we need to have faith and trust in God's word, a confidence in God's word today. What is God's word? What does it mean in your life today? The promises that we can claim. You know, I love a promise that God gives us that says, Greater is he that is in what? Me. Than he that is in the world. And I'm not ashamed of the gospel. You know, Paul said, I'm not ashamed, in Hebrews, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. It is the power of God unto salvation. 
I'm not ashamed of it. So Paul, number three, Paul had great character. Great character. You know, what is our character like? What drives our lives today? In 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3, For our exhortation does not come from error or impunity or by way of deceit, but just as we have been approved by God to be entrusted with the gospel, all of us here, so we speak, not as pleasing men, but who? God. Not as pleasing men, but God who examines our hearts. For we never came with flattering speech, as you know, nor with a pretext for greed. God is a witness. Nor did we seek the glory from men, either from you or from others, even though as apostles of Christ we might have asserted our authority. He says we didn't do it. Man, he presented the gospel, and it, and it wasn't for pleasing men. You know, I mean, politicians want to please men. They don't care about, many of them don't care about pleasing God. Pleasing God should be first. So Paul was not greedy, he says. I wasn't in a popularity uh, contest. You know, I was not looking for, you know, authority of man or power or earthly pleasures. Man, I wanted to glorify God. And that's what we're sh we should be. We want to glorify God. You know, number four on your outline, he had a divine accountability Divine accountability. Man, who are we accountable to? Are we accountable to God? Who are we accountable to? In verse 4 he says, But just as we have been approved by who? By God. by God. And entrusted with the gospel. We speak not as pleasing men, but God. It wasn't a man pleaser. He wanted to please God. Now one day... We're all going to stand before God. Every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess Jesus Christ as Lord. Even the demons believe in God. They know who he is, and yet they rejected him. And there's going to be millions, billions of people that have rejected him. And he's going to say, depart from me and enter this place that I have prepared for the devil and his angels and those that have rejected his authority in their lives as Lord and Savior. And many are going to stand there and they're going to go into that place of outer judgment, wailing, gnashing of teeth, extreme torment, day and for today and forever. You got a choice. He came to his own, it says in John 1, and his own rejected him and received him not. But we're going to be accountable as Christians also. You're going to be rewarded for what you did for Jesus. Don't you want to have your rewards in heaven? Don't you want to have great rewards in heaven? Don't you want to hear these words last week's sermon? Well done, good and faithful servant. Well done. And it starts with having faith in Christ, not compromising, not man's opinions, not just accepting all these crazy things, winds and doctrines and having itching ears, but standing for God's truth. And I, I want to have my rewards in heaven. So he had divine accountability before God. The other thing he had was great faith. I want to have great faith. Great faith and obedience. You know, many told me, hey, you know, with this pandemic over, what has it been, 13, 14 months now? They said, close down the church. Close it down. Close the doors. What? Three weeks. Yeah, just, you know, it was started with two weeks, didn't it? Just two weeks, then two months, then six months, and now a year. And Has Costco closed down any time during this period? What about Walmart? Home Depot? Jack in a box? Beef and bun. <laughs> Beef and bun. I drove by beef and bun last night. De Steve and Debbie live over that way. And I was thinking, okay, you know, I got five minutes. They don't have the inside dining open. They have the outside dining open. 
And there, I, so I drove up by there, and there was a line that was going down the street. There was like 25 cars wanting their strawberry milkshakes like me. It was packed. Man, when's, when's the church going to return to being packed? You know, they, I mean, people are itching for Padres. If they would open up, they would be packed. But, you know, it's like the church. Remember that survey that I read to you, Barnea group? They said that probably only one-third of the people that were in church a year ago are going to return. Only one-third. Paul had great faith. He was obedient to God. He had an awesome respect and fear of God. And he wanted his life to count for Jesus. Think about that. He was an example of Christ's likeness. He was an imitator of Jesus. He had great character and courage. He did not give in to the world's doctrines. He was uncompromising Staying with the truth of God's word. He had great faith and obedience. He discipled believers just like in our society. The same conditions. He discipled believers. And they went out after being discipled all over the world. And really started changing the world in the first century. In uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 7. Here's how one of the ways that he molded and shaped disciples to maturity, it says, but we proved to be gentle among you as a nursing mother, an example of a nursing mother who tenderly cares for her children. You know, I'm seeing it right now in my house with, with Dana. Man, she has such tender care for little David. I mean, she's tirelessly, you know, getting up and feeding them, changing the diapers and everything that she does. And, you know, it's like even when she's changing them, you know, she's learned she needs to put a towel over him. <laughs> I think you know why. Because there was like a, you know, a, a fountain going everywhere. <laughs> you know, and she knows to make sure those diapers get on right. And she knows the right temperature, you know, of the milk and how often to feed and everything else. And that's what Paul says as an example. Man, I was like a gentle nursing mother who tenderly cares for her children. He's talking to his disciples, compassionate. And then he doesn't leave the guys out. He says in verse 11, and just as you know how we were exhorting and encouraging <clears throat> and imploring each one of you as a father would his own children. Man, the father's love for his own children. Children. He uses the example of the mother. He uses the example of the father. And he was living it out. He was living it out with his spiritual children. And then he was also praying for them. Back in 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 2, he says, We give thanks to God always for all of you, making mention of you in our prayers, constantly bearing in mind your work of faith and labor of love and steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ in the presence of God and our Father. And I don't know how people do it today without hope. I mean, we're all hoping in the government, you know, and the stimulus checks and everything else. I mean, that we just can't keep printing money, people. Who's going to pay for that? Now it's twenty-eight million. You wonder why you know, twenty-eight trillion. You wonder why our money isn't going to be any good anymore. I mean, our hope has to be in Jesus, and He says, "Hope, our steadfastness of hope." In our Lord Jesus Christ, our faith, you know, our spiritual development. You know, kids, do they see us pray? Do our grandkids, will they see us pray? You know, will they, will they see us read our scriptures, our Bible? Will we read it with them? Will we have Christian 
I was going to say videos, but Netflix, will there be any Christian movies that we can sit and watch with them? Do we, will we have a passion for Christ? Will we have an influence upon other people? You know, I mean, there's, we, so many people have influences on us. But it says, don't walk in the counsel of the ungodly. Don't sit in the seat of scoffers. Man, we should have an influence upon them. I want the worship, worship, oh, the world worship guy. (laughs) (laughs) We're going to take communion. And, uh, you know, God said, he says, some of you are sick and some of you have died because you took communion unworthily. Remember we talked about Priscilla and uh, what was the other guy's name? The one that, is it a killer in Priscilla? No. Ananias and Sapphira, that's what I meant. Ananias and Sapphira that were disobedient to God. And I was thinking, what about Jonah? Remember Jonah? disobedient to God and God had to get his life by bringing along a fish that ate him up for three days and he lived in the belly of the fish until finally he cried out to God and there's so many other Nebuchadnezzar in scriptures God had to take Nebuchadnezzar and and had to he he was living in the fields for seven years because of his disobedience to God until he finally cried out to God. And God says, check our hearts. Examine our hearts. Make sure we're doing what we read in the scriptures. Make sure we're living for Christ. And then he says, then you can partake in the, the bread, which represents the body of Christ, and the juice that represents his blood. I love the song. <clears throat> nothing but the blood of Jesus. We're not going to let anything else get in the way. We're going to keep him number one. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can wash away my sins? Another stimulus check? A better job? A new car? What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. And I'm going to have Dan come on up here. Do you have a plan? Start today. Make disciples of Jesus. Paul, an example of Christ's likeness. Paul held to the uncompromised truth of God's word. Paul had a great godly character and courage. Paul had divine accountability before God. Paul had great faith and obedience. But don't forget how his life started. Hated Christians. A persecutor of the church. Wanted to take them out of their homes. Wanted to put them in prison and eventually be beheaded. Think of uh, Nero. He hated Christians so much that he, when he found them, he put them on standards going to the city of Rome. Put them on standards and lit them on fire persecutor of Christians I'm not ashamed of the gospel it's the power of God unto salvation praise God hallelujah Lord God Lord we thank you Father you've been so good to us 
And Lord God, because of your goodness, unfortunately, we've grown cold as a church, as a nation, as a people. We've whittled down, for the most part, our relationship with you. Little thoughts here, little thoughts there. One, maybe two weeks of service of church a week. You even said in the, in the book of Revelation that you cried out that we would turn back to our first love, Lord. And that we would do the works that we started with. When we first got saved, we were fired up for God. The burden of sin was removed from our heart. The condemnation was removed from us. We were willing and ready to do whatever for the kingdom. And then your beautiful grace loved us and we started making excuses. I don't have to do that to make heaven. I don't have to do that. I don't have to obey that law. I don't have to obey that commandment. I don't have to obey that truth. Pick and choose. And that's where we're at in 2021. And if you see the writing on the wall, boy, it's time to make a change. We're all sinners. We all struggle. We all have burdens. We all fall short. But they can't be the reason why we stay stuck. <clears throat> Even now, we have the chance. It says, as often you do this, do this unto me. And the point of the matter is this. He says, to bring ourselves and inspect ourselves, bring it to him. And he's never going to condemn but he does want to show us our self, our sin, and what's holding us up. And he says, as often as you do, you bring it to, it's his body that was broken to free us, to fellowship. So we could take this communion right now and leave here and go and come back next week. But I think we need all of us, everyone in this room, to really ponder where we're at in faith <clears throat> and in Christ and in obedience. Someone give us a moment. And he said, many are you sleeping and sick because we've taken this communion unworthily. We just did it as another duty, walked out. And he says, I want to bring a life. I saved you to use you for the kingdom, not for yourself. If we're still alive, then there's a reason for the kingdom for us. Finances is a big part. We think we don't have to pay tithes. That's a lie. The, it's a commandment. We don't think we have to forgive. We don't think we have to serve. We don't think we have to love. Because he'll forgive us. And that's why we're in the state we are in America today. And I'm guilty on all fronts. My flesh stinketh. But Lord God, you died on the cross and you brought them right before your burial and you brought them to the table. You put them in a place at the table and you said, I'm going to fellowship with you. I'm going to break my body for your benefit. And you washed our feet. So I just pray that none of us leave here today the same, but that God would break us for the things that break his heart. And we would leave here that the spirit of the living God lead us, show us, give us the victory. That's why he died on the cross, to give us the victory over our flesh so we could be purposeful in the kingdom for his glory. 
So, Lord, as we break this, we're gonna, I do that in faith. I do that with my brothers and sisters in faith. Break us, Lord God. And he said, take, eat. Break our hearts, Lord God. Put our hands to the plow. Use our finances. Use our gifts. Use our talents. This is the body of Christ that God has given us. 7525 El Cajon Boulevard. We come here every week. This is the body. Pastor Dave kind of sitting in the position as the head. God's given him vision for the body. We have to decide if we want to be a part of the vision. In the blood of Christ, we're going to drink that next. If you want to get that open. Because the blood is what empowers us to be free from this flesh. So even now by faith, Lord God, I, you broke the curse. But by faith right now, 2021, whatever today is, March 7th maybe. 2021, curse has been broken again. He says, as often you do, do this in remembrance of what you did for us on the cross. We're free to walk in the spirit, to walk in the resurrection, to walk in you, in the newness, with you being the head. So, Lord, we pray that the Holy Spirit would start a new work in us, in this body, in this house, in this temple, in our minds, in our hearts, in La Mesa, in California. All things, old things have passed away. All things have become new. Lord, we're going to leave here with a new attitude. We're going to leave here with a new reverence for you, a new mindset. What can I do for the kingdom of God? By obedience to the Holy Spirit. Because I know he's speaking in all of our hearts, and he's brought us to this place. And he's going to speak when we leave. But we have to listen. We have to desire that. So by the shed blood, Lord God, we do that now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Lord, I pray that you would just have your way in each of us. And go before us. And bring us back here, Lord God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. There's a time change coming up. Don't forget, I think it's in two weeks. Oh, is it next week? Next week. So you need to move your clocks ahead one hour. And uh, we'll have some extra coffee for you for next week. And donuts waiting for you outside and refreshments. So remember to do that next week, okay? And then um, coming up, can you believe it? We are almost at Easter again. Just in a couple weeks. First week in April. And uh, Easter last week was can or last year was canceled. But we were still here. And we're not going to cancel Easter, okay? And Good Friday, we're going to have a Good Friday service at 630. And uh, Easter Saturday night and Easter Sunday morning at 10. So... Make sure you put that on your calendar. It's one day that people will get out of their houses and come to church. Easter. And so invite them, encourage them to come. Tell them we have air conditioning and heaters that are all HIPAA certified. Uh, and we've got, you know, we've got uh, sanitizers and we got the temperature duns and sugar-free donuts and you know all kinds of stuff so you know invite them to come also there's plenty of food over there and we went again on friday and got three thousand pounds of food and took it out to the trailer parks again and and uh, the hitching posts and down the street and all over the place and people have been coming during the week so that's you know a ministry that god's really using especially in this time when people are hurting physically but man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. So we put a packet of stuff together.
and uh, we give that out as well. You know, we give one of those cards, those blue cards back there that have the gospel on the back of them, and uh, we give out uh, five or six things that we put in that packet as a welcoming, you know, to invite people to come to church. They may not come to church, but hopefully they'll go through that bag and read those things that are in there as well as eating all the food that they have. So uh, great to see all of you here today. God bless you. Make disciples. Your family, your grandkids, your kids. Be an example for Christ. Be an imitator of Christ. Let's all stand. Oh, forget it. I got to tell you this. I know you guys are ready to leave. But we, last week, we, you know, we still have prayer on Wednesdays and Thursdays at 5 o'clock, 5 to 6. And when Dan started this over a year ago, I'm going, man, nobody will come. 5 o'clock. You know, and then on, on Friday nights, uh, still at 5, but it, twice a month we have praise and worship and just prayer time, praying for people. And then Saturday night after church, we pray. Well, right over here where Steve and Debbie were, there was a couple there that go to our church that were right there. And they were right there next to your wife. And they were just sitting there and uh, praying. And all of a sudden, um, a young lady with her two kids came through the door. And they came up to where Debbie was, where this lady in our church was. And she looked at her and she goes, oh. That's a beautiful girl. Yeah. And then she went back praying and worshiping God. And then she looked again. And it was her daughter. Who they had a broken relationship by things that had happened for how many years? Many years. And um, it's the first time she's seen her daughter in years. And her granddaughter's. And when she recognized her, they got up and they gave each other a big hug. And it was right here in the church. Her her granddaughter, or her daughter, went over to where they live and thought that she would be there. And she wasn't there. And so she thought, the, the daughter thought, well, she's not here. She must be in church. So they came here to church, and that relationship was restored with the daughter and with the, the granddaughter. And, you know, God is doing miracles. If we only had eyes to see all the miracles that he's doing today. And you here are a miracle. And you watching online, you guys are miracles. Praise God. Now you can sing. Oh, wait a minute. No. <laughs> Your blood speaks a better word than all the empty claims I've heard upon this earth. Speaks righteousness for me. It stands in my defense. Jesus, it's your blood. What can wash away our sins? What can make us whole again? Nothing but the blood, nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can wash us pure as snow? Welcomed as the friends of God. Nothing but your blood, nothing but your blood, King Jesus. Hallelujah. 
your cross testifies in grace tells of the father's heart to make a way for us but boldly we approach not by earthly confidence it's only by your blood what can wash away our sins what can make us whole again nothing but the blood nothing but the blood of Jesus what can wash us pure as snow welcomed as the friends of God nothing but your blood Nothing but your blood, King Jesus. What can wash away our sins? What can make us whole again? Nothing but the blood, nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can wash us pure as snow, welcomed as the friends of God? Nothing but your blood, nothing but your blood, King Jesus. Nothing but your blood. Nothing but your blood, King Jesus. Amen. God bless you. And uh, take whatever food you have. Oh, there's eggs, too. Um, pass it to your neighbors if you don't need it. Share it in the name of Jesus. God bless.